And uh, I believe I'm joined with Miss Christine right now. How's it going? Hello. Good, good. How, how are you? I am well. I just stepped away from Scarole, the Han- Halloween convention. Oh, awesome. So hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm, I'm upstairs at the convention center. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. And I also want to thank you for that incredible birthday video message, um, courtesy of Cameo. Um, That was one of the best birthday messages I've ever gotten, just from start to finish. (laughs) That was just, and I, I, and like, I know you do ventriloquist and stuff and things like that. Um, And then I did, I was like, you pick any Muppet you want. And uh, the skunk one was just entertaining. <laughs> just so Stunkles. Into- he loves to do birthday wishes. So so shout out shout out to Stunkles for sure. Um, let's go ahead and begin. How did it get? How did you get started into um, being a ventriloquist? How did this start off for you? I started doing ventriloquism. Um, I didn't. I didn't know it was a thing that people did. I just made my teddy bear talk, my invisible friends talk. I did it so that this little girl that was staying at the Ronald McDonald House at the same time we were. Um, I wanted to prove to her that her stuffed gizmo doll wasn't whispering in her ear and just didn't like me. That he wasn't actually talking because my teddy bear and my stuffed animals could talk to everyone, but they chose not to talk to her. And that's what I did it. I did it as a way to, like, basically kind of deal with someone who was unintentionally bullying me by saying that her her stuffed animal didn't like me. And it was hard because we were both going through stuff. We were staying at Riley's or at um, the Robbie Donald House where we had family at Riley's. My brother was in the hospital. And then when he got out of the hospital, I continued to do it with other invisible friends and stuffed animals. And then after he passed away, my parents got me a puppet, and I used it as a way to help other kids who'd lost loved ones. Mm. And you know, I, I've I've been a fan of that line of work for quite some time. Um, Jeff Dunham's, you know, comes in mind. Um, him mm-hmm. being so successful at what he does uh, and so entertaining, you know, you know, it that takes a lot of work. You know, people don't realize that. You know, a lot, a lot, a lot of, a lot of practice goes putting that together making it possible um what was the first muppet that you used um when you first got started my first puppet was freddy he was a big furry red monster puppet and he was almost as big as me at the time um i think the first time i did a public performance with him was the francis bill folly i was seven maybe at the time it was our local talent show, and it was in front of a bunch of people on an outdoor stage, and I performed with the Girl Scouts, like my troop had gone up and sang, and then I went up with Freddie to sing, and I got so nervous, I couldn't remember what I was supposed to do, and then I did it, and everything was fine, and I just kept doing it. Definitely, you know, any performer, any entertainer, whether you're a music artist or a comedian or ventriloquist, that has the guts to go out there and perform in front of an audience, you know, respect to everyone, you know, you know, cause it's, that's not for everybody. Some people will be shy. Like you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta command that stage. You gotta go in there with confidence, uh, or you're going to be eaten alive pretty much. Um, and you know, I've, I've been checking out your, your videos on YouTube and all the other puppets that you've used um what do you consider like the most popular one the one that people likes the most from all of the ones that you use per se i think that everybody has their own favorite character based on their life experiences and what they relate to Mm -hmm. a lot of young kids really relate to stunkles because He deals with bullying a lot, and he will talk about it and how he doesn't really like being a skunk because people don't like skunks, and they understand what it's like to really feel um, like they're 
they're challenged by other people and, and feeling like they don't fit in or whatever it is they're going through. A lot of times I find that they relate to him. Also, he's just cute and has those big blue eyes and everybody just loves him. Um, Darlene, a lot of people who love the art love her because they understand what goes into her and they understand a little bit more the history of figures and that, you know, the person who created her, Clinton Detweiler, was an incredible figure maker. And people who are really into the art form of ventriloquism uh, often can recognize what figure was made by what creator and they know a lot about kind of the history of things. Um, there are a few people that really, really love Grandpa. I don't even do that character very often. Um, a few people, Darwin is their favorite. Um, there's one person that absolutely adores Susie Q, and I think I've only used her maybe twice in the last probably year, <laughs> and yet they ask for her regularly. Like, can I see Susie? Can you bring Susie out? So everybody has their own favorite. I don't pick favorites because they're like family to me and I'm not going to pick favorites, but I enjoy all using all of the different characters at different times for different reasons. My husband's favorite is the marker board. Hands down, hundred percent, always he loves the marker board. It's his favorite thing in my show. So it just depends on the person. I, I definitely love Stunkles. You know, that's, <laughs> you know, that five might be the five of my favorite skunk since Pepe Le Pew. And, and, <laughs> and from the looks of things, I say Stonkos is more likable than Pepe Le Pew. Pepe was just trying to flirt or something. I don't know. Um, I was young back then, watching cartoons. Pepe was a bit of a player, if I remember player, yes, correctly. Yes. He was always chasing that cat. Yes, yes, player. Absolutely. And yeah, just flirtatious and whatnot. Um, but Stunkles is, it just got my heart. And <laughs> so that, that was just, you know, Cameo is a, an amazing website. People can like request video messages from a variety of people, famous people, up and comers. That's how I heard of you. Um, what was it like to have people get video message requests um, reach out to you for that. Uh, how do you feel about the whole concept of people, you know, with video messages and everything? I actually really love Cameo. I think it's great because they've taken an idea that's kind of been around for a while and made a business out of it and made it easier for all of us and put everybody in one spot, which is great. I've had people request video messages for me since, phones. I mean, since cell phones, not regular phones, but <laughs> basically since you could create easy content, I've had people who will write me and say, hey, you know, it's my daughter's birthday and she really loves puppets. Could you just put a video together for her? I'll, I'll send you, you know, I'll pay you your money or send your check if you want. And so it's something that's kind of been coming up from, from fans for years. So it was really great. My friend Chad actually told me, Chad Lindbergh told me about Cameo. He's like, you've got to get on here. And so it was it was fun to have him telling me about this, this cool new thing that ended up being really great. And it's a great way to just kind of direct everybody to a safe place where you can send content back and forth and, like, they can speak through the app instead of, you know, people trying to track you down and... Social media has made the world a little bit of a different place anyway, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's kind of nice to have that safety net of a company that's kind of controlling it all, <laughs> too, because you don't always know who people are when they want to get a hold of you and what they want. Very, very true. A lot of catfishing out there, you know. <laughs> you know, p people try to get me to do online dating. I'm like, uh-uh. You know, I I'll stick the old school way. I, I want face-to-face -face interaction. You know, anyone could be anybody yeah. on this on in, in these time of day. So, like, I could be seeing one person, then I see that person in person, and it's like, you do not look like the people in that in the photos. Like, I got bamboozled. This the Ashton Kutcher <laughs> hooked you up on this. Um, you know, so this that's something else. And one more thing I want to ask before I let you go. 
Um, uh-huh. You are also on a site called Musically. Um, I've heard. Well, Musically is now gone. Oh, it music- turned into TikTok a couple of weeks ago. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. So Byte Dance, this company um, called Byte Dance, bought Musically and Flipagram and invested into other. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you. Yeah. You, so yeah. if you look for me on Musically, you'll have to download TikTok now. It's T I K T O K, TikTok. And I'm on there. I'm crowned on there. And I make content um, daily. I missed one day this week, which was the first time since I've had the app, I think, that I've ever missed posting. Um, I just got a little bit too busy and didn't get anything up in time. But normally I post daily on the platform. My cats post a couple times a week. They're also crowned on there. It's Bagheera Fun. And then I'm um, also posting on YouTube daily now. I'm doing daily vlogs on YouTube on my personal channel. So I do a lot of daily content. I'm on Vigo. I'm on all, all the different platforms. And Darlene often does stuff with me, and so does Strunkles, which is nice. I bring the puppets in to a lot of those videos. Uh, and Darlene's super excited right now, too, because she is going to be on Penn & Teller Fool Us next month mm-hmm. doing mm-hmm. mentalism. So... Wow, it looks like Cammy. I'm gonna to have to change all the them people's profiles. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. There's a lot of yeah. <laughs> and they, and the funny. I didn't even think about it. I probably should mention to them. Like yeah. I don't know if they know. Yeah. They, that it turned it changed over, but I can I can message my rep and let her know that it goes by a different name now. It's no longer called Musically. We had a big announcement party. I actually posted a YouTube video with um, the announcement from the, um, the big event in Los Angeles where the CEO is speaking about it. Oh. If you want to see all the information, it's, it's on my YouTube. Awesome. It was great chatting with you, Christine. Thank you for taking time off the convention and doing this and uh, continuing success in all your work. And you know what? I think I'm going to go and send another the cameo request in the near future uh, <laughs> and, and, and bring Stonkles with you. Bring Bring... Bring uh, Sonkos with you for that. So um, you enjoy the rest of your convention weekend. And uh, thank you for your time. And um, Well, thank you. You have a great weekend as well. 